At Thule Lake, people witness strange blazing shapes in the night called Hinotama. And in dreaming, he had a vision of his deceased mother. She was holding a bowl of rice. After death, Rosita journeyed to heaven and met God, who asked her where her children were. For some people in this cultural milieu, um, an alien has more relevance than a ghost. the darkness, beyond the grave, to an unexplored dimension as we travel to the mysterious realm of ghosts. Journey with us into the world of ghost stories. He heard a clanking noise deep down below as if someone were dragging a heavy chain over the casks in the wine merchant's cellar. Scrooge recalled that ghosts in haunted houses were said to drag chains. Suddenly, the cellar door flew open with a booming sound and the clanking noise grew louder. First on the floors below, then coming up the stairs, then coming straight towards the bedroom. The old man tried to convince himself that these were nothing more than the sounds of an aged house settling. But then a ghastly phantom passed right through the heavy chamber door. In literature, the practice of creating ghosts to evoke a sense of terror in one's readers is as old as the art of storytelling itself. Throughout history, the device has been used so effectively that even the phrase ghost story conjures up images of horror and dread. But when did such tales begin? And where did this notion of spirits returning from the dead to terrify the living come from? There are those who believe that death is the end. But they are greatly outnumbered by others who, at least on some level, accept the existence of an afterlife. Whether it is a belief that one goes to heaven or hell, or that the soul is reincarnated in another life on earth, or that it becomes part of the collective consciousness, the element of the spirit world is there. And because it is accepted that souls or spirits can journey to other realms, logic follows that they must also be able to return. Where the belief regarding the wandering of the soul after death originated is impossible to tell. But one thing is certain. In all societies, from the most primitive to the most modern, the law of ghost and spirit is present. And over generations, these tales of the restless dead become part of a culture's very fabric. They're no longer simply ghost stories, they become legends. One such is the account of La Llorona, a doomed young Mexican woman. At night, she wanders along the banks of streams and rivers, crying for her missing children. In Spanish, La Llorona means the weeping woman, and she is perhaps the most widely known ghost in the Spanish Southwest. In life, her name was Rosita. She was a peasant girl who one day caught the eye of a handsome suitor, they fell in love, and over a period of years, she bore his children. The young man visited Rosita often, and their life together was wonderful in almost every way, except that their union was not blessed by the church. Moreover, the young man's parents were unaware of the arrangement. Had they been, they would have surely disapproved, because in their philosophy, a girl such as Rosita was not worthy of a son such as theirs. Time passed and the man's parents arranged for him to be wed to the daughter of a wealthy landowner. Obliged to honor his parents' wishes, the young man sadly informed Rosita that he must marry another. But he promised to visit her and the children often. Enraged by the betrayal, Rosita drove her lover away. And on the day of his wedding, Rosita, crazed with grief, took their children to a river and drowned them and herself. After death, 
Rosita journeyed to heaven and met God, who asked her where her children were. Ashamed, the pitiful girl told him she didn't know. God explained that without them, he could not allow her to enter paradise. Rosita had no choice but to return to earth. To this day, Rosita, La Llorona, can be seen searching in vain alongside rivers and streams, weeping and crying for her innocent, murdered children. There are three essential elements for a legend. A strong basic story appeal, a foundation in actual belief, and a meaningful message or moral. The story of La Llorona is an obedience legend. It is told as a true story of what might get you if you're out after dark. But the more frequent use of the story is aimed at teenage girls to warn them against becoming involved with men who might say all the right things, but who will never marry them. Many, many ghost stories are directed at young people. It's part of the socialization process to hear these stories and to learn about what is proper behavior and what is not proper behavior from the stories. The way a legend becomes legendary is not simply due to its subject matter. Such tales also gain longevity as a result of the manner in which a storyteller sets up his saga. A typical American legend, uh, in fact the classic automobile legend that has to do with ghosts is called the vanishing hitchhiker. And almost everybody has heard this. Um, usually you hear it from a friend of a friend. You're telling the story and you say, a friend of my friend told me this, thus it has authenticity. Also, usually it uh, is connected to a specific place, a specific road, maybe even a specific name. So the story always seems very authentic. In the legend of the vanishing hitchhiker, the person seeking a ride is most often a young woman. Hey, are you on a ride? Yeah, I'm all right. Um, do you think I could get a ride? Yeah, of course. Sure, jump in the back. Must be freezing. Thanks. Here, you want to take my coat? Oh, thank you. Thanks. As they ride along, the couple ask their hitchhiker where she's going. The woman tells them, and they agree to take her there. But when they arrive, the good Samaritans realize something is terribly wrong. Here we are. The young woman has inexplicably vanished. Knowing the girl could not have possibly exited the car prior to their arrival, the baffled couple decide to ask the occupants of the house about their mysterious passenger. The owner turns out to be the young woman's father, who explains to the couple that five years ago, his daughter Mary was returning from college for the Thanksgiving holiday when she was killed in a horrible car crash outside of town. Ever since the accident, when school is not in session, his determined young daughter attempts the long journey home. But sadly, his dutiful child never makes it that far. As the couple are about to leave, the man mentions that on their way back, they'll pass right by the cemetery where his daughter is buried. The gentleman then thanks the man and woman for their kindness to Mary, and they go. Back on the road, curiosity gets the best of the couple, and they stop at the cemetery. Could the eerie story the man told them really be true? Did they, in fact, give a ride to a ghost? They find the answers to their questions quickly enough. They approach a grave and instantly recognize it as Mary's because there, draped over a headstone with her name on it, is the coat that the young hitchhiking woman had borrowed. Like so many other legends, there are as many variations of the vanishing hitchhiker tale as there are numbers of people who tell it. And though there are countless versions, logically, the story had to begin elsewhere. How do such legends come into existence? There are many, many legends about ghosts that become localized or regionalized. Um, sometimes they have to do with a real event. For example, when Susan Smith murdered her two little boys, she had them in the back of the car and she put the car into the lake and they died there. Recently we've seen another carload of people died at the very same spot. 
Thus, legends are already beginning to be circulated about that place, that perhaps the spirits of the little boys are there and they're seeking to bring other people to their watery death with them.